Hey guys, George's Soundtracks here, and this week we're gonna take a step back. We're gonna go back to basics. And what this is, is this is a series that we've started a while back just to kind of help remind uh, some of you guys about what the fundamentals are about DCC, but also anybody who's new to the uh, DCC world as well, so that that way you can better understand what's happening so that when you're running and setting up your model trains, you can have more fun with product knowledge. So today we're gonna get back into basics. We're gonna talk about CVs. Well, what is a CV? Let's get started. Now, when it comes to setting up your decoder, there's a lot of different things that you can do. For example, you can set up and select the air horn that plays. You can select the type of air compressor. You can select the prime mover, the bell. You can also adjust volumes and all of that. But the question is, how do we do that? Well, this is where CVs come into play. Well, what is a CV? CV stands for configuration variable. This allows you to vary or to change the configuration or the setup of the decoder so that that way when you're running your locomotive, you can get it running the way you want it, not just the way we set it up from the factory. And CVs can be used to adjust just about every aspect of the decoder's performance, whether it be acceleration, deceleration rates. You can change a speed table. You can change the sounds of the air horn or the bell, just like we were talking about a minute ago. All of these are done through CVs, and this allows you to vary or change the configuration of the decoder. Now, one of the things when it comes to CVs, you hear the term programming CVs. It's not a term that I really like. It's unfortunately one of the ones that's actually accepted and used widespread throughout the hobby. But when it comes to programming, you hear the word programming, a lot of people get nervous and get scared because, oh my God, I'm not a computer programmer. Well, the good news is you don't need to be a computer programmer. What you're doing is you're basically adjusting or changing the performance of the decoder using the CV. So if you think of it less of programming your decoder, but more of making adjustments to your decoder's performance, now it doesn't become quite as intimidating. And these words do matter. So when you hear terms like programming, what happened is a lot of guys got together in the 90s when we invented DCC and said, well, let's program CVs. Sure, that works for me. We all understand. Great, let's do it. The problem is the lay people like you and I don't really think of it as programming. And so that makes it a little bit intimidating. And so rest assured that when it comes to making changes to the decoder, you're not actually programming the decoder, you're actually just making adjustments to its performance so the decoder behaves the way you want it to. So a CV can be used for a myriad of different things like I was talking about. It can be used to adjust an acceleration or deceleration rate and anything in between, including the address of the decoder. And a CV can be adjusted and set up using a DCC system, whether you have NCE or Digitrax or whoever out there, you can usually set up all the CVs using the system that you're using. But when it comes to programming and adjusting your CVs, I actually prefer the Blue Nami. It's a lot easier, but we'll get to that at the very end. But when it comes to adjusting a CV, Every CV is built, is structured exactly the same way. A CV is structured with eight bits and each bit is numbered bit zero through bit seven. And the value of, the, of that particular bit doubles as it works its way across. So bit zero is worth one, bit one is worth two. And this is where it gets a little confusing right up front because that ones and twos all mix right together. So bit two is worth a value of four and bit three is worth a value of eight, and so on as you work your way across. Now these bits can be used to combine together to create a full CV value, and that's the value from zero to 255. And so any unique combination of these numbers, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and 128, can create a value between zero and 255. Now the bits individually can be used to turn on and off certain features rather than using an entire CV uh, value to say turn on, I don't know, a lighting effect. The individual bits can be used to determine different aspects of how, for example, the light illuminates. So 
the bits can work together. And to create those numbers, if you want that particular feature that's assigned to the bit, you turn it on, you add that bit value to the total of the CV. If you want that bit off, then you would ignore that value and move on and leave it at zero. And so if we look at CV29, I'm gonna use this locomotive here in front of me. This is address number 3018. So this is a long address. So if we use CV29, for example, the first one is what's called the direction, and it determines what is the normal direction of travel. Well, when I install the decoder, the short hood runs forward, and so therefore, I'm gonna leave the normal direction of travel as normal, so I'm gonna ignore that first bit. So my value of one is ignored. Now, if I was running this locomotive long hood as forward, then I could use CV29 uh, bit zero to invert the direction. So when I hit forward on my cab or my blue NAMI, I would run, in this case, long hood forward. The next part of CV29 determines whether you're in 14 speed step mode or in 28 or 128 speed step mode. And the difference is, is that in 14 speed step mode, basically the ones and zeros are formulated a little bit differently so that the command is sent out, whereas speed steps 28 or 128, the communication is formulated a little bit differently. And so what it's doing is it's making sure that your decoder is watching the command as it's supposed to, to make sure it gets all of the information properly. The next one is what turns on analog mode. Oh, uh, this particular one, we do want to enable the 28128. So bit one worth a value of two, we do add to the total. Now the next one is what's called analog enabled. Now in this case, I'm never going to run this on an analog layout using the variable voltage power pack as its command. Now with this being blue NAMI, I can put it on a DC layout and it ignores that voltage because DC is disabled. It ignores that voltage as a command and just uses it for power. So then my commands come from the app on my phone. So when you're using a blue NAMI in a DC environment, you don't want to enable that because otherwise that voltage on the rail will be interpreted as a command and your locomotive will boogie down the track. So in that particular case, then bit two, that's worth a value of four, we ignore. Now the next one that's worth a value of eight isn't used, so the value of 16, which is bit four, so bit four worth a value of 16 is actually for the alternate speed tables. And this is if you want to build a custom speed table. So if you want to maximize your top speed, uh, change it to ma speed match with another locomotive, this is where you would enable that. On this particular locomotive, I've used the default linear speed table, so I leave that disabled. And the last one, which is bit five, is worth a value of 32, and that's what enables the extended address or the long address in DCC or in NCE lingo or four-digit addressing in Digitrax. And so we do want to enable that because 3018 is considered an extended or a long address. And so that value of 32 is now added into the value for CV29. So in review, we have two plus 32 equals 34. So my CV29 value is going to be 34. And that's how you can kind of deconstruct. Now, in some cases, the bits work together completely, such as a volume control. And so when I'm using a volume control on the decoder, when I go in and set CV128, which is master volume, from zero to 255, the bit structure is still there, just in this particular case, each of those bits are working together to create a final value that the decoder uses now as a percentage from 0 to 100%, 0 to 255. So this is what you're basically doing when it comes to making adjustments on your decoder. And so when you're looking for a particular feature you're wanting to enable, or if you're looking for how to adjust, for example, the volume, this is where referring to the Soundtracks Tsunami 2 Blue NAMI or Eco NAMI User's Guide is going to be key because it will explain each feature built into the decoder. So when it comes to sound selection, I'll use a steam locomotive, for example. So for example, when we're talking about steam, each of the bits are used for individuals. So when it comes to the steam decoder, the first two bits are used to determine which type of fuel is being used, whether you're hand shovel coal, auger fed coal, um, or 
wood burner or oil burner. That a, bit, a combination of those bits tells the decoder to play these particular sounds. Then if you have a power reverse or manual Johnson bar, um, that's another part of that bit. If you're using an articulated exhaust with and without wheel slip, all of those are built into CV112, but the user's guide will walk you through that so that if you want, for example, oil, you're going to add a value of three to the total into CV112 so that that way you can determine which one uh, actually plays and how those bits are structured in the CV tell the decoder again how to perform. So overall, you don't want to be afraid of CVs. Jump in there. There's a couple of factors when it comes to Soundtracks products. If you accidentally type in the wrong value, like for example, you got big man bear claws like I got, big fat fingers, man, it's easy to hit the wrong button when you're typing away on your keypad. And especially when you're using the NCE because it's not a 10 key, it's a four across. And so when I'm used to hitting a three on a 10 key, I go to the last top button, but that's the four. So it happens occasionally where you may mistype, but one of the safeguards Soundtracks puts into our decoders is to make sure that if that CV bit or that value does not do anything, we don't just leave it blank. We have the decoder with safeguards in there to make sure ah, 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 that's not a choice. So therefore it defaults back to what it was. For example, let's go back to our steam decoder. If I have 90 whistles to choose from, 0 to 89, if I accidentally try to select whistle 95, that could potentially put the decoder into a vapor lock. Basically, there's no information in memory slot 95, so the decoder is looking for information that's not there, but it can't proceed until it gets that information, so it puts it into vapor lock. We have those safeguards that if you try to pick whistle 95, the decoder will override that default back to zero and say that's not a choice so that way you don't break your decoder so you can't break your decoder by changing cv values you may get some unpredicted behavior if you fat finger or type in a wrong value but you didn't break it you can always recover it be by setting cv 8 to 8 and resetting cycling power and getting back to defaults or you can go back and reprogram that CV number to a different value so that that way that erratic or unusual or unexpected behavior goes away. In my opinion, if you could break a decoder by changing a CV value, we wouldn't have done our job very well. And so I know there's brands of decoders out there where if you type in the wrong value, you can break it. And so this is kind of what can make a lot of people apprehensive or scared of programming CVs because if we left a landmine for you to find by accident, we didn't do our job very well. So with that, you can program your Soundtracks decoders using a DCC system or the BlueNami app with confidence knowing that you're never going to have a problem when it comes to selections. So again, you're going to want to refer to that user's guide where it'll give you all the all the variables and adjustments that you can make with the decoder. The user's guide will explain the feature and then give you the range so that that way you can program and adjust your decoder with confidence. Now, when it comes to the Blue Nami app, I do want to point out that when I go in here, I'm going to go to Multitrain. Now, for you guys, this is the brand new Blue Nami app for Apple that I'm testing, so be watching for announcements on how you can get a copy of that. But when I go into settings, let's say I want to go back and change my air horn. Well, my air horn is governed by CV number 120. And so if I wanted a Leslie RS3L, what's the value? Well, with Blue Nami, you don't need to know because the app will tell you all that for you. So when I go in here, I'm going to go to sound settings and then you're going to see I've got master volume, main sounds, other sounds. Well, the horn is considered a main sound. And I know on this particular locomotive, it's I have it programmed right now for a Nathan P3, which would be correct for this Rio Grande Jeep 30. So you can see right now, I scroll down about the middle of the screen, you see horn, Nathan P3. But if I click that, I see a full list of all the different air horns that are there to choose from. And as I scroll, you can see that the Nathan P3 is highlighted because that's what it's currently defaulted at. So as I go through the list, uh, it was at, at a RS3L, here's my RS3L, Leslie RS3L. So I click this and the decoder will now, or the app will actually change the decoder setting it will actually play it so that we can hear if that's what we want. And then I can either hit okay, 
or I can hit cancel and it'll go back. So right now we'll go ahead and set it back to a P3. So we've got our P3. So now if I hit cancel, you'll see that on the screen it says it's still the Leslie RS3L. But if I go and change it to the P3 and I hit okay, now you can see on the screen it says Nathan P3. Just so you know, I've been changing CVs this whole time. You just don't know it because you're doing it behind that nice clean user interface that allows you to make your adjustments to your decoder's performance without worrying about doing all the CV bit math that you would have to do with basically a Tsunami 2 or an Econami. So this is why I highly encourage the Blue Nami because if nothing else, if you didn't want to use the Blue Nami app for operating, it's still a DCC decoder. So you can use the app to do all your settings, adjustments, sound selections, volume adjustments, everything, and then operate it with your DCC system. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I know this has been a little bit longer than I initially anticipated, but I wanted to make sure to get that information out there because this way, when it comes to CVs and making adjustments to your decoder's performance, hopefully this will take away a little bit of that scared, apprehensive feeling that when it comes to making adjustments, because I talk to people all the time that they will call up and they ask, hey, I wanna do X, Y, Z with my decoder. And so I say, oh, okay, you can do that. You said these CVs to this, this, this. And sometimes I'll get that pause with quiet and say, well, I think I'll just live without it. And I get a little, I get a little frustrated inside because I'm literally telling you how to make the adjustment, but people are so afraid of programming CVs that they would rather not take the advice because it's more than one, a simple set this to this and be done. But there's a lot of complexity and, and really advanced features in our Tsunami 2 and Blue Nami that really, sometimes it's not just a single CV. So don't be afraid to program away. Remember, you can always do a CV 8 to 8 reset, or you can do partial CV reset, which we've talked about in previous videos. So be sure to check those out. Guys, that's everything I've got for you. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you want to get one of your really cool 35th anniversary t-shirts, be sure to check them out at Soundtracks.com. Supplies are limited and they are going fast, so make sure you get yours today. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.